Every addiction begins with a single thought. Picture an idea, like a seed, planted deep in the fertile soil of your mind. It takes root, sprouts, and before you know it, it's a towering tree of habit, casting a shadow over your every action, your every choice. Cravings, relapses, all are but leaves on this tree, each one a testament to the power of that original thought. You might attempt to fell this tree to kill the thought, but as anyone who has grappled with addiction knows, a thought is a formidable foe. It's an ethereal entity, slipping through the fingers of your consciousness, resilient and relentless. You can't kill an idea, you can't extinguish a thought. It is a battle against the wind, a futile exertion of energy. In this silent war within the confines of your mind, it often feels as though the addiction holds the upper hand. It knows it can't be killed, but it has one secret weakness. It can be replaced. Imagine if there was a way to replace that insidious thought to shift the battlefield entirely. Think of the mind as a vast landscape. Within this landscape, thoughts are like seeds, sprouting into the reality of our lives. Yet some seeds, born out of curiosity or compulsion, grow into menacing weeds, choking the beauty of our mental garden. These are the seeds of addiction, and their roots run deep. But what if we could replace these seeds? What if instead of trying to uproot them, we plant stronger, more resilient seeds that can outgrow and overshadow the addictive thought? This is the essence of the replacement theory. In the heart of this theory, we find the concept of divine focus. By shifting our attention towards spirituality, particularly towards God, we create an environment in the mind where the seeds of addiction struggle to thrive. Consider the divine as an infinite source of peace, joy and love. These are not fleeting sensations that ebb and flow with circumstance, but a constant, unchanging force. The allure of such divine attributes can be so compelling, so magnetizing, that it begins to replace the addictive thought at the very root. Imagine, the more you immerse yourself in this divine energy, the more you fill your mind with scripture and spiritual content, the more you cultivate this higher addiction. An addiction not to a substance or a behavior, but to an experience. An experience of peace that surpasses understanding, a joy that is unshakable, and a love that is unconditional. This is not about fighting or resisting, but about transforming. It's about replacing the craving thoughts with thoughts that uplift and inspire. It's about turning the energy of addiction into the energy of elevation. And so, as you stand on the battlefield of your mind, remember this. You have the power to replace the seeds of addiction with seeds of divinity. You have the power to change the landscape of your thoughts, and in doing so, change the reality of your life. What if you could become addicted to something that uplifted you rather than destroyed you? Before we continue, please subscribe and like the video. Thank you. Have you ever lost yourself in the pages of a sacred text or found peace in the silence of prayer? There was once a person, let's call them the Wanderer. The Wanderer was ensnared in the thorny vines of addiction, each thorn a craving, each vine a chain. They were lost in a labyrinth of their own thoughts, chasing the fleeting satisfaction of their addiction, only to find themselves deeper in the maze. But one day, amidst the turmoil of their thoughts, the wanderer stumbled upon a seed, a seed of divine truth. This seed was not like the thorns they were accustomed to. It was soft and warm, and it glowed with an ethereal light. Intrigued, the wanderer decided to plant this seed in the fertile soil of their spirit. As the seed took root, the wanderer found themselves drawn to the divine. They began to read scripture, losing themselves in the tales of divine love and wisdom. The words were like water, quenching the thirst that their addiction had never been able to satiate. The wanderer also discovered the solace of prayer, the silence that spoke volumes, the quiet that quelled the chaos. Each prayer was like sunlight, nourishing the seed within them, encouraging it to grow, to stretch towards the heavens. Their thoughts, once a labyrinth of cravings, began to resemble a garden, every thought a petal, every moment a bloom. Meditation became their sanctuary, a sacred space where they could observe their thoughts without judgment. It was in this space that the wanderer truly began to understand the nature of their cravings, to see them not as an integral part of themselves, but as thorns that could be pruned away. And as they nurtured this newfound spirituality, the wanderer found that the vines of addiction began to wither. The thorns of craving fell away, replaced by the blossoms of divine love, 
peace and joy. Their addiction to the ephemeral was replaced by an addiction to the eternal. And so they found themselves not in the throes of addiction, but in the embrace of the divine. What if the thought that once enslaved you could be the very thing that sets you free? A curious proposition, isn't it? Yet it's within this paradox that the key to overcoming addiction lies. We've journeyed together, exploring the idea that we need not slay the beast of addictive thought, but instead transform it, shape it into a vessel of spiritual resonance. Imagine a thought, once a harbinger of craving and relapse, now a beacon of divine connection. This is the victory of thought, a victory that doesn't merely end an addiction, but rather it commences a pilgrimage towards spiritual growth, towards understanding, towards love. Through this transformation, we replace the insidious with the divine, the transient with the eternal. And in this metamorphosis, the thought that once held you captive becomes the key to your liberation. In the end, it's not about killing the thought, but about letting it lead you to a higher form of addiction, an addiction to the divine.